One of the big stories as we reach the end of the 2018 Formula One season that's still unresolved is the future of Robert Kubica. He's at Williams at the moment, still trying to turn his reserve drive there into a race drive, and there is a vacant seat. But recent talk has come up that Ferrari could be interested in him, not for a race seat, but for a reserve role that they've had filled by drivers such as Antonio Giovinazzi and Daniel Kvyat recently. Those two guys are both moving into race seats in Formula One next year, so Ferrari have that vacancy. Kubica perhaps could be the perfect man for the job. I've got Edge Draw and Scott Mitchell here. Neither of those are the perfect man for the job, but they're here to talk to us about it. And Ed, let's start with just the idea of Kubica going there. Do you think this one makes sense for Ferrari and for Robert? I think it would do. Ferrari, as you said, they're losing their two simulator drivers. Antonio Giovinazzi is probably the primary one, but Kvyat was doing it quite a bit as well. And that's been very important to the work they've done. They're always doing work on Grand Prix weekends. So it's a very important role, simulator driver nowadays, particularly for a, a big team like Ferrari. Kubica has experience in contemporary Formula One cars. He does a lot of simulator work for Williams, so they know he can do the job. And he's experienced, he's an intelligent guy, and he's also somebody who wants something to throw his effort in. So he's done that a lot with Williams this year, and that he's almost permanently at the track. The only time you really don't see him at the track is if he's gone off back to base to do some, uh, some simulator work. So, yeah, he, he's a, an obvious choice, and he brings a lot of experience and knowledge and enthusiasm to the role. So, yeah, it's, I think he's a, an absolutely perfect fit if he can't get the Williams drive, which he's, shall we say, he's a contender for, but perhaps not the favourite to get to get a seat. So this seems to be his best way to continue. And you never know, it could lead to some GT racing opportunities with Ferrari as well, as we've seen with guys like Giovinazzi. So I imagine he will, he will like that as well. So he could be the next sort of XF1 star to end up with a Ferrari job for life. Now, Scott, we know that in Robert's first F1 career, before he suffered the injuries in the rally accident, there was a chance that he would have ended up at Ferrari. He's been quite honest about that this year, in fact, in some interviews. Would him finally go in there, even if it's in a reduced role to what we perhaps expected a few years ago, is that kind of a nice heartwarming chapter to add to Kubica's F1 story? I think so, because when he talked about it earlier this year, he opened up about sort of the, the three goals, basically, I guess, that he had, especially growing up racing in Italy. Was one was to get to F1, two was to race for Ferrari, three was to be world champion. And he always pointed out he was never world champion and he didn't race for Ferrari, but he was very close. And th this wouldn't be racing for Ferrari, but it would be being part of the Ferrari family. And I remember speaking to, uh, to Sam Bird about what it means to represent Ferrari. And this is just on a GT level. And he just says, like, when you, when you pull on a, a red suit and you have that, the prancing horse, and he's just like, you feel a bit like Superman, basically. Because it's just cool. It's, it resonates with everybody, especially someone like Robert, who a big part of his career is based in Italy. He, he admits that it doesn't make it any more painful, or it didn't make it any more painful to know that he was out of F1 and had lost a Ferrari drive. So it, it was pure pain at, at not being able to continue in F1 that hurt. But when he thinks about it, obviously he does see it as a, a massive lost opportunity. It could have been what, what got him a, a world championship. So the fact that he goes there, OK, if he misses out on an F1 race return, that's the dream ending to this incredible story that he's had. But go, being reunited with Ferrari or being united with Ferrari in some way is, is, is a pretty good alternative. I think it is a, a really good ending as well because Everybody got really carried away with, oh, Kubica's coming back. We hoped he was the driver of old. The simple fact is, by his own admission, he's not. He says he's now driving 70% left-handed. He's obviously got limited uh, control and dexterity with his, with his right hand. He can drive a Formula One car, but in terms of getting that last little edge, I think the old Kubica has, has gone. So while there's kind of a temptation to think, oh, this is disappointing that you can't get a race drive, it's incredible that you've got a driver who's made a positive contribution to Williams this year who can then go to a team like Ferrari and play a genuine important role. You know, that's an incredible achievement. Remember, this is a guy who for many years couldn't even go to a race circuit because he knew, knew what he'd lost. I remember him telling me a few years ago that he went to a DTM round he was invited to by Toto Wolff, but he basically had to turn around when he got near to the circuit because it kind of brought everything back and he wanted to be able to go back to the track and be a, a meaningful participant. And this is what he's able to do. And what he's done with Williams, he's getting a move to Ferrari. Not a race seat, but, but still, what a story and what an incredible achievement. We shouldn't underestimate how big a mountain he's had to climb to get to this point. So this, I think we agree, would be effectively him perhaps signalling the end of any race drive ambitions. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I think so. I think... I'm, I'm sure there will be a small part of him that thinks maybe. But. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's already openly admitted that if he doesn't get the Williams drive for next year, then he will look at other racing alternatives for next season, which would be 
easier to dovetail a simulator role with, you would imagine, other than unless it clashes all with F1 weekends, because Ferrari, like all the big teams, have relied heavily on simulation over race weekends, and Giovinazzi and Kvyat have been name-checked by Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen this year. We've cred they've credited them for the assistance with bad Fridays turning into good or great Saturdays and Sundays. So Kubica can go there, play a meaningful role in, in something bigger than, than he's in at the moment. He just thinks a lot of people, as Ed said, get carried away with it, but we shouldn't ignore the fact that he is on the verge of being passed over by a second F1 team now for a race seat. A team that has already taken a gamble on one of its drivers for next year, George Russell, as a, as a person that doesn't need to bring massive budget with him, doesn't need to bring funding with him, they'll just take the punt. Kubica does bring budget and apparently has more backing than he had this time 12 months ago. So if they really, really believed in him over someone like George Russell, which you would take the Presumably, you would take the first iteration of Kubica over George Russell as a Grand Prix winner. That indicates that they don't have that same faith. And when they've got that much data, that shows that he is lacking a little bit, lacking too much maybe to be a proper race driver again in F1, but certainly not lacking enough to be a, a, a merited simulator driver. He, he can go to Ferrari and, and do a very good job. I think the bottom line is if he was to race in Formula One, I think he'd be fine. He wouldn't be terrible and you think this guy's out of his depth he'd be able to do it, but it wouldn't be the Kibitza of old. And that, that was a guy who was so, so good. I remember watching him Monaco 2010 in the run out. Absolutely stunning. Some of the best stuff I've seen kind of watching trackside on a Grand Prix weekend. You know, this guy was absolute top draw. So the question isn't whether he could do it, because he could. It's whether he could do it to a level high enough to justify somebody giving him a drive, which the evidence so far isn't good. But he is good enough, certainly, to be a very positive factor at Ferrari's simulator driver. I think it's fair to say that if you're the other eight teams on the grid and you see that Renault had a good look at him last year, Williams had a very good look at him this year, if neither of those teams have been prepared to take him on, the other teams are probably going, there's clearly something missing. But one of the things that was missing whenever he's been in the car is perhaps that ultimate one lap pace. And all the feedback we've had from the teams that have run him is that his consistency and, and race development stints have been very good when he's in the car. So does that potentially mean that he's the ideal simulator driver now. Yeah, I think so. And also, Ed pointed out maybe he'll get some GT opportunities further down the line. It makes him the perfect endurance racing driver as well. We know that he took a little look at LMP1, didn't he, about doing the WEC. So I think he's got... I still find it incredible that he has a shot at a proper racing career again. That in itself is such an amazing achievement. And what I'd like to see is him end up in a situation where he is able to choose the very best option for himself and not cling to the F1 dream so long that he loses the potential to do something amazing somewhere else. And, and the Ferrari thing, having that link to F1, working for Ferrari, whatever opportunities that might offer up as well, that's awesome in its own right. If he clings to the prospect of a, a Williams option and, and gets sort of sucked into waiting and waiting and waiting, maybe the deadline for the Ferrari job offer passes, and that would be a massive shame to see. And we should also not forget, just how serious that accident was in 2011 on the Ronda de Andorra rally. Basically, it was a barrier coming through the car with inevitable consequences. This was not a minor accident. It's very easy because of the nature of it to kind of underestimate it, but it was really, really serious. It's had a profound impact on his life. He's had to kind of relearn how to do things and sort of become left-handed. So we have to remember that context when looking at anything Kibitza does. And, you know, this is fantastic that there's even a possibility of him going to Ferrari as a simulator driver and that he's playing an active role. I mean, good on him. Enormous determination. It has not been easy for him to get this far.